Hello and welcome back to another HitFilm tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create the Netflix intro title inside of HitFilm. I will be using HitFilm Pro for this tutorial and this title, however you can create this inside of HitFilm Express if you have the 3D Generate Pack, as we will be needing the Extrusion Geometry. Let's get on with this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is create a new composite shot. This composite shot can be named whatever you like, but as I'm going for the Netflix title, I'm going to call it Netflix title. Then I'm going to ch change the duration over to being 4 seconds. Then just press OK. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of this new composite shot is create a new plane. This plane layer can be named whatever you want to call it, but I'm just going to call it plane, and I'm going you want to make sure that it is white, or whatever you want the colour of your text to be. Then I'm just going to press OK. Then on this white plane layer, I'm going to add a vignette. And I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the plane layer. Then in the vignette settings, I'm going to turn down the amount of strength. And also decrease the width and the height. And once again, just take down that strength. This just adds a bit more shading. Then what I'm going to do is set this plane layer to being 3D. That is because later on we're going to be creating some 3D text that will then cast shadows onto the background, creating those classic shadows from the Netflix logo. When you want to change a layer to 3D inside of HitFilm, it will ask if you want to create a camera, and what you want to do is press yes, and that will create a camera and also set the layer to being 3D, meaning that we can move it around in 3D space and do all that kind of cool stuff. We need to change the material properties for this plane, so select the plane, then go to the controls tab, then go over to material, and then you want to turn off illuminated, because later on we're going to be adding a 3D light, but we don't want that to be lighting the background, instead we just want this to be cast that light to be casting shadows and also illuminating the text. You want to leave receive shadows on and all of the other options can stay as they are. Now we need to actually create the text for this logo. So under the new layer option, select text. Then you want to type out the title of your company or YouTube channel or whatever you're making this title for. I'm going to type Netflix because I'm creating the Netflix title. And when I select this, you can see that I've already got this set to the font that I want, which you can see just here. There will also be a link in the description for where you can download this font for free. I set the scale of my text to 400, however you kind of want this to fit in the center of your frame. The first thing that we're going to be doing is creating the red text that the 3D text becomes when it finishes. This will make more sense as we go through on the effect. So I'm going to select the text, grab the color picker tool, and just select the red that is shown below. If you don't have that, then just open the colour options and then just change this to a slightly lighter red. And that is now red. Then I'm just going to centre this text. I'm just going to use the centre of the F for reference. And now that's centred in place. I'm then also just going to rename this text layer by pressing F2 to rename it. And I'm just going to call this red text. So what we're now going to do is duplicate this red text and then we're going to be changing this over to being white and we're going to be cutting up this red text into each individual letter of the title. So this layer will turn into the N for the start of Netflix. I will be setting this to 3D, making it cast shadows, applying the extrusion and then that's setting it up for when we want to start animating it and making it look even better. So I'm just going to select all of this text for the Netflix on the duplicate red text layer and I'm just going to set the color from red over to white. I'm going to leave all of the other settings the same then go back to the selection tool. Also select the layer and then change its layer dimension over to being 3D. Then in the material options for this duplicate of the red text, I'm going to turn off receive shadows and turn on cast shadows. I'm also going to select this top layer, press F2 to rename it, and just name it N, 
Then I'm going to select all of the other letters other than the first letter of my title and delete them. I'm also just going to turn off the background plane so that it's clearer to see where I'm lining up the first letter. Something that's easier for us to do while we're creating, while we only have one letter, is add the 3D text elements now. So to do this, you can either search in the effects tab for extrude and drag and drop the geometry extrusion, or you can go over to the effect itself and press on the green plus next to geometry and then select extrude. I'm now just going to dial in some settings and I'm going to change the depth from 50 over to 200 and I'm going to change the face from front and back over to back. I'm just going to turn this off for now as it might get a bit confusing while I'm trying to line up the letter with that N if I have some extra colour that we don't need for the time being. So then I'm going to select the N text layer and I'm just going to line this up over the N of the red text. Just line it up as best as you can. Then you want to duplicate this, rename it, change the letter, and then move it so that it covers up the E of the red text, or whatever letter you have in its place. And then you want to keep doing this for the rest of your title. Okay, so I've now been through and separated each of these letters into their own text layer, which have all of the same properties that the N that we originally created has for all of its material settings, and it also has the disabled extrusion. So what I'm going to do now is animate each of these letters so that they create that kind of wave animation that you see in the Netflix intro. I'm just going to re-enable the plane layer that we have for the background, and then I'm going to go to the N for the Netflix, open up the transform options, and start keyframing on the first frame for position. Then I'm going to advance by six frames, and set the positions Z to 100. Then I'm going to move ahead by another 10 frames, and set this back to zero. So we kind of have that lifting off of the page and back onto it, that you see in the Netflix intro. Then in the search in timeline search bar I'm going to search for position. Then I'm going to go through and select all of the position controls. And then I'm going to, apart from the end that we've already animated, then I'm going to set a keyframe at 0, 0 for that layer. Then I'm going to move ahead and line it up with the middle keyframe and create a keyframe there. Then I'm going to move ahead and line it up with the final keyframe and create one more. Then I'm going to go through each of the middle keyframes and set this to 100. Make sure that you don't accidentally start animating the position of the red text or the background or the camera. So now we kind of want this to wave so it's offset, because at the moment they all raise off at the same time and then are lower at the same time. Well, we want them to all raise at different times but end at the same time. So to do this, we're just going to offset each of these layers. So I'm going to offset the N by one frame, so it's not there on the first frame. Then I'm going to offset the E by one frame from the previous layer, and so on. So I'm just going to create a, a staircase with one frame in between each layer. And you can kind of see this happening here. If you watch this through, you will see that all of the layers kind of still weird kind of wave dance, but instead we want them all to land at the same time. So using the N as a guide, we're going to go to the last frame, and then once again in the search and timeline, we're going to search for position, and then we're going to go through, then you want to go through and line up all of these final keyframes with the final keyframe of the first letter. So as you can see here, all of their final keyframes are in the same place. 
and the effect that that gives us is this. Then also on the last frame, then also on this last frame you want to go through and grab the slice tool and end all of your individual letter layers there. And this is where the transition over to the red text will take part, uh, take place. Then you can just shift the red text along so that it starts at the end of this, meaning that unless there is a letter there, it won't be visible. Now we want to re-add that 3D extrusion that we created earlier, but then we disabled. So in the search in timeline search bar, just search for extrusion. Then you can go through and select all of the layers that have extrusion, and then just activate it for all of those layers. And if we just disable the back layer, you can see that that has 3D extruded the text out of the back face, which is what we want. But at the moment, we don't have those awesome shadows that you see in the Netflix intro. So from here, we want to create a light. So go to the new layer button and select light. And if you're wondering why this isn't already casting shadows, that is because we haven't set the light to cast shadows. So if you go into the light settings, you will see an option that says cast shadows, and you just want to check that checkbox. You might have to move your light in order to see the effects of this, because in its default spawn position, you won't see any shadows. But then if you move it forwards in Z space, you will see these very dramatic shadows. What I'm going to do from here is then change the type of this point light over to being a spotlight. As you can see, that's kind of created a cone in the viewer. From here, I'm then going to make sure that cast shadows is activated, and I'm also just going to change the cone angle from 15 to something around 95. Then under shadow opacity, I'm going to change it from 50% to 100%. And then under shadow diffusion, I'm going to change it from 0 to something around 30. Then if you open up the transform controls, you can change the position. I found somewhere that works fairly well to get the diagonal shadows, but of course you can feel free to play around and see what effect you like. But if you want to have the exact same look as I do, then copy these values that I put in. In the positions X, I'm going to change this value from 0 over to being negative, negative 3051.4. And this will just shift it over to the left. Then, under Positions Y option, I'm going to change this to 2939, and that will then move it up. And then, under the Z control, I'm going to change this to 9996.3, and that will now move it into a more accurate position. However, you will see that this isn't doing anything, and that's because we haven't set it to be rotated towards the text. So, to do this, I'm just going to change the rotation X and Y. So, I'm going to change the rotation X from 0 to 33, and then under rotation Y, I'm going to change it from 0 to 41. And now you can see these fairly dramatic shadows. Of course, you can play around with these settings as much as you like to get a look that better matches what you're going for. What I want to do is kind of soften these inner shadows because at the moment they're just a solid black. So I'm going to create a new ambient light. So I'm going to press new layer, select light, and then change it from a point light to being an ambient light. And then under intensity, I'm going to change it from 100 over to being 23. And as you can see, this will just soften those inner shadows of the text. If you then scrub through the timeline, you will see that the red text is also being illuminated, but you can easily turn that off by just going into the red text controls, going into material, and turning off illuminated. So we've now set up the animation for the text appearing and revealing itself, and then we have also set up the animation behind all of that, as well as the red text afterwards. And that looks pretty cool. You'll also notice that on the Netflix intro, the red text scales back down and becomes smaller over the rest of the timeline. 
So what I'm going to do inside of the red text transform properties, I'm going to start position, I'm going to start keyframing for position and scale, and then move towards the end of the timeline and change the scale from 100 to 85. And then I'm also just going to correct the position using the in viewer handles so that then it's still centered. And now, as you can see, we have this pretty cool Netflix intro title. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. And also, if you want to, then please ring the notification bell, so that then you're notified when I next upload. If you have any questions, then please feel free to ask in the comments below, and if you have any tutorial suggestions, then once again, please feel free to tell me. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.